Oh, howdy y'all, grab yourself a beer, it's time for some part of XL discussion. Uh, this is part two of a two-part series where we're looking at the challenges for the current Scourge League. Uh, and in this video, we're looking at your pathways to 36 or 40 challenges. So this is going to look solely at the 13 hardest challenges, in my opinion. Uh, the other 27 are covered in part one of the video, and those are linked down in the description below. So if you're going for 36, you need to do all 27 of the easy ones, plus nine of the ones in this video. If you're going for 40, you're going to need to do them all. Uh, depending upon your skills, you might decide, there's several that you might decide to skip. You're definitely skipping on any path to 36. You're definitely skipping Master the Blood, Crucible, and Endgame Grinds. Uh, but for the other two, you might decide to skip Capstone Encounters and skip really uh, Defeat the Feared simultaneously if you are someone that has uh, limited experience in doing difficult bosses and you're not willing to interact with other players to get their help in it. Uh, alternately, there's other ones that you might decide to skip if you are able to do those boss encounters. So let's start with Transform Items 2, which is a challenge that I got through dumb luck quite early in the league, but I'm putting it in the hardest 13 because I think most people will need to take a little bit of time with this one. So here you need to get two very rare outcomes uh, out of the four that are in the list. So you need to get five of the outcomes and there are a list of seven of them. Getting a resistance mod, a defense mod, or a deal no damage mod are super common. These are very common drawbacks. You would already have these, probably all of them, before you reach it to, to maps. So that feels like you've made a really big amount of progress towards this achievement, but the last four are all quite rare. So firstly, there's Curse on Hit. Uh, this is an extremely rare outcome on gloves. It's about 0.55% chance to get. Uh, so if you get this one, fantastic, but if not, go for something else because there's no drawback here. So that means that you're only going to get it as an upside, and because it's such a powerful upside, it's a very rare upside. So second is gem level. There's a couple of percentage chance to get this on chess, uh, so you're more likely to get it as a drawback than as a benefit, but you can get it as either. And so getting it as a drawback is enough to count for the challenge. I think it's something like 1.6% uh, to get it as a drawback, 0.7% to get it as a positive, uh, and that is the easiest of the rare ones. Next is getting a keystone. This is a 0.8% chance to get on a chest. Uh, so that's between all 41, I think, keystones that you can get, or maybe it's 42. Uh, all of them add up to 0.8%. They're very, very rare individually. So you're not likely to get that, and you're probably not going to go for it. Then there's reservation efficiency, which is available both as a positive and a drawback on amulets. And the drawback, again, is more common. So too long didn't read version is prioritize chests until you get gem level. What, if you've already got a keystone before that, like I did, then fantastic, you've, you've solved it, you've got everything done. But if you don't, then you, once you've got gem level, you're going to want to focus on crangling amulets instead. Uh, I level 68 plus only, and I suggest that you use cheap but good uniques, so that if you do get a good outcome, uh, then it's something that you can potentially sell to another player, or even use yourself. Next up is Assist the Forsaken Masters. So this requires a lot of grinding in various endga uh, various endgame uses of the various master missions. So Red Beast will take a large number of Einhar missions. Uh, it's worth logging in daily to get your missions, even if you're not in the mood to play at the time, uh, just so that you can bank these up. Uh, you will receive your missions for the day. This is an important point. You will receive your missions for the day once you log in far enough to get to town. So just log in a character, uh, go go to town, and then just alt F4 out of the game, and you will get your master missions for the day. Shaper requires modest degrees of bossing experience. Uh, turn off Maven Witness. If you're not super experienced with the Shaper fight and you're not playing on a super powerful character, then you definitely want to do the Shaper fight without Maven Witness. Uh, Shaper, however, is always profitable. Uh, if you're in a trade league, you will always be able to sell the fragments that have a... There's two different fragments, both have a 50% drop rate. You'll always get one of them, and they sell for quite a bit more than the access keys to the Shape of Flight cost. Anything else you get on top of that is a bonus. Remember that if you've got the wrong component pieces for it, so let's say that you've got four copies of the Phoenix map and none of the other Guardians, uh, you can use Horizon Orbs to turn your excesses of one Guardian map into other ones. So you'll need to beat the Phoenix, the Hydra, the Minotaur, and the Chimera in order to get the access fragments for the Shaper. Then you'll need to beat the Shaper himself. Without Maven Witness, it's my opinion that the Shaper is quite a bit easier than some of the prerequisite bosses are, uh, And although it does take a little bit of practice. I do have a guide to the Shaper and to all of the Guardians, uh, and I will put a link down in the uh, video below. A Delve requires a solid mapper. Tier, uh, tier 250 in the Delve Mines is about as hard as 6 mod rare Tier 16 maps. 
You also need to use a number of Nico missions in order to get enough sulfite to get that deep in the mines. Uh, you won't need to do a massive amount. I think I needed to use maybe 25 or 30 Nico missions uh, in order to get that deep. So I actually just traded for a bunch of uh, sulfite scarabs earlier in the league. That's certainly an option, or you can just use master missions. You will, by the time you get enough uh, Einhar missions to do the Einhar Red Beast part, you will definitely get enough Nico juice in order to do the Delve part. Temple of Atsawadl and Safe Houses take a lot less mapping and a lot less master missions. So these can be left to last. Uh, if you've earned enough Einhar missions, you will have more than enough Elva missions and Jun missions saved. So just a warning, don't sleep on this challenge. It takes quite a bit of time. Uh, this will be on every plausible pathway to 36, but it will take longer than most of the other challenges on this list. As a result, you need to start this one now. Uh, focus on making some progress and most importantly, focus on just banking up all those master missions and just getting uh, picking maps that are fast uh, and that you can reliably count on where the spawns will be and that will make all of your progress a lot faster than it will otherwise be on this challenge. Our next is complete unique maps. So you need to do 15 out of 17 here. So you can skip two. Uh, th there's a couple of them that are harder to get than others. Doriani's Machinarium is drop restricted to Ahutotli the Blind, one of the Delve bosses. And it's a pretty low drop rate from Ahutotli as well. So for that reason, most paths to 15 of these maps will not include Doriani's Machinarium. If you get one, great. It just means you can skip one of the others. Or you can sell your Doriani's Machinarium if you're in Trade League. Uh, it tends to sell pretty well. Vingtar Square has a clunky vendor recipe. You need to vendor all four Agnarod staves, all of which are tier three rarity uniques. Vendor all of them at eye level 83 plus, and you'll receive a tier 16 Vingtar Square. Uh, if you vendor lower tier ones, you'll get a tier 13 Vingtar Square. Uh, fun fact, this vendor recipe is profitable in trade almost always. Uh, so you can make yourself a little bit of currency if you've got the patience just by going and trading for Vingtar, oh, sorry, for Agnarod staves off various players. Uh, get like six of each of them, vendor them all at once, and then just sell your Vinktar squares. And you will make currency out of that. It's just that it's a lot of hassle and a lot of people don't want to do it. That's why it's uh, profitable. So three of the other maps are tier three rarity uniques. These are Coward's Trial, Twilight Temple, and Putrid Cloister. This is all uh, information that was uh, determined during 3.14, so it might not be true now, but I think it still is. The rest of them are tier four or five rarity uniques, so prioritize the rarer ones when you get them. You know, if you get to choose between two different unique mi uh, maps you haven't done in a Zana mission, then prioritize Coward's Trial first, Twilight Temple and Putrid Cloister second. Uh, those are a little bit lower because they are maps that are just less valuable in trade than Coward's Trial is. And then your tier four and five rarity uniques, you can just get them whenever. Surprisingly, Hallowed Ground is only tier 4. I thought that was like one of the rarest unique maps for a long time, but perhaps I was just wrong on that. For Solo Cell Found, this is what your Zana missions are for late game. Consider specking into them with your Uncharted, uh, Uncharted Realms passive points so that Zana can send you to a wider diverse, uh, diversity of maps that will help you complete the unique maps you're missing. There's also a Beast and Divination card that will give you a random unique map when you use them. Uh, that's something that can help you find some of the uniques you're missing, Although, of course, that will bias towards giving you the tier 5 rarity unique maps, like the strand map, uh, or the tier 4 rarity unique ones, and your tier 3 ones will be a bit rarer from it. To the best of my knowledge, neither the Beast nor the Divination card can give you either the Doriani's Machinarium or the other rare map, the Vingtar Square. Combined Powers is next. Uh, this is easy, but it's also fiddly. Beast with an Essence will just happen by random luck, uh, if you're missing this one late in the league, then map in Haywark if you need to after specking into Essences, uh, but you shouldn't need to do that. It should just happen by itself. Prophecy While Delirious, uh, you want a common crafting prophecy like the Beautiful Guide, which is the instant 20 quality uh, for one Cartographer's Chisel, and you want to carry all requisite materials into a 20% Delirious map. Uh, you don't need to waste a Delirium Orb on this. 20% Delirious maps drop a lot in heist with Demolition Rewards, uh, so just do one of those and boom, it goes to dynamite. You've got yourself a, deliri a prophecy completed while you are delirious. For Beyond Boss in Grove, this one's fiddly as well. Uh, you need a map that has native beyond, so rolled on the map device as an explicit, oh, sorry, on the map itself as an explicit mod. But, and then you just run a few of these. You'll, you'll have these maps happen over time and eventually one of them will have harvest. Harvest is 8% to be in random maps and more likely if you're mapping in Haywark Hamlet having specced into harvest. And at that point, uh, just enter the Scourge Krangleverse multiple times in the Harvest and pull all of the Harvest packs to one spot. 
When you do this, uh, you should be able to get this cr credit for this challenge by spawning one of the bosses. Uh, specking into Beyond makes this easier, as does adding Zana Beyond, uh, but I was able to get this in a magic map from a Zana mission, and so that just had the 13% chance for Beyond uh, for Beyond portals to spawn. No, nothing else from Atlas passives because it was a Zana mission. I it just happened to have a harvest in it, and I was uh, that was enough for me to be able to get there. So defeat Scourge bosses is next. Now this could also be on your pathway to 24 if you get lucky. Uh, I had this as my 24th challenge myself, but uh, it's not. So it's something that you know most players will probably get closer to 36. So the bosses are somewhat mean, well Gore isn't, but the other two are, and they're very durable. You want to fight them in easy maps if possible, uh, and that means not rolled with nasty mods, and ideally at a relatively low exposed to corruption level. So what this means is you want to recognise if the map you're in has one of these bosses. Now Scourge maps can contain a mod that says that they are guaranteed to have a specific boss in them. Uh, this seems to be very, very rare. I have not had this personally, I just know it exists, and as a result I wouldn't count on that. So, Gore the Grasping Moor has a tell. If the map's Krangleverse is full of large purple cocoons, and these really stand out, then Gore is present somewhere. Uh, it'll have a minimap icon when you're close to it, and so that will help you tell that Gore is present. So, Baydat's tell is more subtle, but still very visible. Uh, Lightning will dominate your side, will dominate the Krangleverse in that map. If, if Baydat's in it, then his lightning will be all throughout the map. For Katash, uh, she has a very subtle and hard to see tell. There will be meteors striking throughout the Krangleverse. They're red and they're somewhat easily missed against the red background of the Krangleverse, uh, especially as they don't strike very often, but they do leave pretty remarkable effects on the ground. All of these bosses are soft to decoy totem strategies. All of them primarily do damage in a frontal cone. Uh, so think of them, fight them as though they're Omniphobia. If you're not familiar with the strategies that these bosses use, just fight them as though they're Omniphobia from the Simulacrum content uh, and just abuse the uh, abuse the use of Decoy Totem. One very important mechanic with the Scourge bosses is that while you are fighting them, uh, when you first encounter them and also at every point that you knock them un under a multiple of 5% of their health, uh, you will receive a 5 second grace period during which the countdown on the Scourge, on the Scourge Blood Crucible will not decrement. So during this period, you've got as much time as you need to hit them. Well, you've got five seconds during which you can hit the boss without your being kicked out of the Krangleverse. However, uh, if you are taking more than 100 seconds to kill the boss, you're going to have a situation where you're not able to uh, you're not able to do enough damage to remain in the Krangleverse the entire time. If this is the case, then you're going to need to basically go or like get the boss down as much as you can. Then when you kicked out of the Krangleverse, you'll need to go and earn some more Scourge Juice, uh, refill your Blood Crucible Bar, then come back to the boss and re-engage the boss and start fighting them again. When you do re-engage them, you will spawn an additional pack around the boss as well, and you'll want to remember where the boss is located exactly in the, uh, in the Krangleverse, and then spawn at an appropriate distance from it uh, when you re-enter the Krangleverse yourself. But do keep Decoy Totem in mind, uh, it is extremely, extremely good against all three bosses. Now, Baydad and Katash are speculated to be tier 11+. Plus. I do know that Gore is present in low tiers, as I have personally fought it in a tier 4 map, uh, but Baydad and Katash I have only seen in red tier maps. So, the next challenge is to do 10 maps that are each 10 Scourged. Uh, these have hard combat encounters, but could be on a path to 24, as you only need to kill a map boss. You don't need to kill everything in the... and you don't need to kill lots of monsters in the Krangleverse. This is far, far, far easier to complete in low-tier maps. Uh, generally speaking, if you just want to do this challenge, you can scourge Tier 1 maps that are scoured. However, I think you probably want to be doing your maps for loot as well, and as a result, you would probably want to use uh, Chisel Elked maps and scourge those. Now, only 10 Scourge a map if the map mods remain beatable. There's a bias towards getting more copies of existing map drawbacks for, through the Scourge system. So this means, for instance, if you hit 3000 physical damage on Realm Transfer on your fourth Krangle, there's a very high chance that you will wind up at 9000 or more when the map is 10 Scourged. If you can't beat 9000 physical damage on Realm Transfer, and I know that my characters can't do that, then you want to stop Scourging when you hit 6000. Maybe even stop scourging at 3,000. In trade, sell off your juicy maps that you can't beat. 
there are several 10 Scourge maps that I've sold that have sold for more than an Exalt, uh, and several more that have sold in, this, in the quarter of an Exalt to full Exalt range as well. I just have a look and think, oh, what are the rewards on this? Does this look like it's going to drop a lot of loot? Especially, especially, especially if you get Simulacrum Splinters that drop from it. Uh, simulacrum Splinter maps are worth a fortune. Craft Items 5 is next, and this requires you to use three of the rarest and most expensive currency orbs in the game. So, Awaken Orb and Maven Orbs are strongly suspected to have a 20% drop rate at Awakening Level 8, and a 25% at Awakening Level 9. This isn't absolutely certain or anything, uh, it's just that it's widely believed to be true. Conqueror Exalts are suspected to be a 5% drop rate at Awakening Level 8. Again, this is not proven. So, in other words, self-farming this is a lot of hard fights. In Trade League, uh, what you're going to want to do is set a search alert for boost or uh, boot or chest items that have two Tier 1 mods. Uh, and they're going to be two specific Tier 1 influence mods. One of them is a mod you personally want the elevated version of, and the other one is a popular meta choice. So as an example here, you might look for a chest piece that has the following two mods on it. Uh, Crusader influenced physical damage taken as lightning, and Crusader physical uh, phys monsters explode with a percentage chance to deal physical damage to surrounding enemies. If you find a chest piece that has both of these on it, and let's assume that you want to use the physical damage suffered as lightning instead on your character, then you would use a Maven's Orb on this. If you were to hit, if you were to elevate the wrong one, the one you don't want, uh, the physical the monsters explode dealing physical damage, then that's something that's a popular meta choice. You could then turn around and on sell that to someone else. On the flip side, uh, if you were to hit the mod you wanted, fantastic, you got what you're after. So that's what I would suggest you do in Trade League here, especially, especially if your build wants some niche mod like your character is unaffected by Ignite. Uh, for Conqueror Exalts, you want to use the cheapest one. Uh, so at the time I'm recording this, this is the Crusader's Exalted Orb on item level 86 Stygians. Then you want to use the Harvest Craft that randomizes the influence to another one, uh, to another influence. So this is the one where if you input a Crusader influenced, uh, if, you, if you input a Crusader influenced uh, Stygian Vice, then you will receive back a Stygian Vice with a random but not Crusader, so not the same as, you, as your input uh, influence, and then just turn around and sell that. That's what I would recommend you do in a trade league. Of course, if you're playing in Solar Cell Found, you have to personally find all of these orbs, and in Solar Cell Found, you'll find your own best use. For Awakener Orbs, uh, your best bet is probably going to be to craft a plus two amulet for if you don't have a personal use for an Awakener Orb. For Conquer the Atlas is next. This is my 23rd challenge, I think, or 22nd. This is one of the easier ones in this list. Uh, this is earned through natural play, but it could take four or five Cyrus cycles. 100 Awakening bonus is probably the thing you will earn last. Now, there is a display bug on the progress towards allocating 40 Maven passive sometimes. Once you do get it, it will work. Uh, but you might find that at the point that you've got, say, 24 passives, uh, the progress meter might say you've got 23. Don't worry, you don't need to get 41, uh, you will get there at 40. If it does break, uh, just type the quote, uh, type the ch uh, chat command, so you just type this as though you're trying to chat, uh, forward slash recheck underscore achievements, and that will recheck your achievements and will grant this one if you've earned it. Uncharted points count towards the 40 that you need, and when I got this done, I had 38 regional atlas passives and two points in the Uncharted Realms. Pinnacle Encounters is next. Uh, so Simulacrum Wave 30 is the hardest here in all game modes. Blight Ravage maps are easiest done by abusing Ring Anoints. Tier 3 Empower Towers, and they're absolutely ridiculous, and you want to augment them with Empower, Empower Tower Effect once, and Empower Tower Range once. Once you've got this, uh, it'll allow you to use Tier 3 Chill Towers to trivialize physical immune lanes, and Tier 3 Physical Stun Towers to completely trivialize all other lanes. Damage from Arc Towers and or your own skills as you see fit to finish things off, or you can use Meteor Towers, or you can use Flamethrower Towers, uh, or you can use just whatever you want, really. The key thing is that you are using the towers for crowd control. That will be sufficient to basically beat the encounters as long as you've got some damage coming in. Next up is the Domain of Unrelenting Conflict. Uh, this is hard to do profitably, but not too hard to beat. You need to kill the four bosses once each. An absolute mongrel to get in Solo Cell Found though, and I think that most players in SSF will not beat the Pinnacle Encounters, even if they're extremely good, uh, and the reason will be that they won't get the right emblems for the 
for the domain of unrelenting conflict. Uh, for flawless breach stones, Esh is by far the hardest of them. Uh, so just do one of the ones that's not Esh. Uh, these are not trivial encounters for the non-Esh ones, but Esh is just a brutally difficult fight when monster level 84 is in play and 250% more life. Uh, that makes Esh just... But Esh's inherently really dangerous abilities of teleporting to you, uh, stunning you with the with the very fast attack that Esh's got, that she's got, and then using her massively damaging you know instant death ring nova. Uh, Esh just has the most dangerous skill set of all of the bosses. Uh, if you're in a trade league, then trade eight twenty will sell all of these. Uh, and in hardcore, I think that this in, this is such a brutal encounter that fewer than fifty players in the entire league will be able to do it. Uh, that's my prediction there. I could be wrong, and people might just surprise me by doing a lot by doing it a lot better than I was expecting. Uh, but this is a genuinely difficult encounter. The feared simultaneously is next. It's the encounter you all feared. Firstly, you're going to need to transmute or alteration for just the simultaneous release mod, which is called of challenge. Uh, this is a suffix, and it is rare. It is one in two hundred and forty-eight to roll it with an alteration orb. This is a brutally dangerous fight. Uh, if your Chaos Resist is low, you need to focus Chaola down first uh, because they have a lot of damage projection for Chaos, so they can project Chaos damage over a long range. Uh, otherwise, you need to kill the Shaper and the Synthetic Nightmare first. Those are the two most dangerous in the encounter for otherwise. Uh, the Elder would be next because the Elder has uh, leaves lasting, lingering garbage on the ground. But I think the Shaper also also drops the same lingering garbage, but the Shaper just has more dangerous other skills. Now, one thing that's made this encounter easier than it would have been in the past to get multiple attempts at, and that is the Divination card for a Replicate Cortex. This drops very rarely in heist, uh, in heist map chests and provides just an additional source in trade leagues of Replica Cortex maps. Replica Cortex is basically the Cortex, but a bit harder. And as a result, it's just meant that there's more Cortexes in the economy. And so Cortex is about 20% cheaper than it would normally be at this point in a league. So that makes it a bit cheaper to re-attempt the Feared or to just unlock the Feared in the first place. Uh, Shaper, Elder, and Uberat's three pieces are really cheap. And Chayula's Breach Stones are not all that expensive in the current league. Uh, so in the current league economy, doing the Feared costs about four exalts and does give you a reasonably good chance of getting the Bottled Faith Flask. Uh, if you get the Bottled Faith Flask, you've made all your currency back and much more. Uh, obviously, most of the time you won't get that because really good chance is something like 20%. But uh, the odds of getting, like, if you were to run a thousand feared cycles, you would make currency out of doing them. Next is Deadly Encounters in Style. So these are not created equal. And I want to sort of go through them in escalating difficulty. So Uberat 3, you need to avoid all lightning damage. You've got to beat Uberat 3 without taking any storm call hits. So this should be your goal in this fight anyway. You're generally trying to avoid all of Uberat 3's skills except the spear, which can be endured. So for that reason, uh, basically just do Uberat 3 as normal. For Cyrus 8, you need to avoid the spinning negation beams, which are the spinning beams. Uh, you absolutely need a teleport move skill to avoid these. Uh, that's because the spinning negation beams will tag you if you move through them with uh, skills like dash that teleport or that don't teleport you with move skills like dash. In softcore, with capped spell suppression and a fairly tanky character, you can focus all your efforts on dodging the SNBs and just face tank the die beams, uh, and that will enable you to beat this relatively easily. For Uber Elder, you need to dodge the Shaper Balls all fight. This is not trivial, but it is something you're probably trying to do anyway because the Shaper Balls are the most dangerous encounter, uh, most dangerous thing in the fight. Then you need to burst the last 25% down because it's only that in the last 25% that the Elder gains Tentacle Lash. So if you save all your Vile skills, all those sorts of uh, all those sorts of good things until the last 25%, uh, then you'll probably get this one done successfully. It is difficult but it's something that you can that is probably the third easiest of these encounters. Uh, the Maven one is hard. It's easy enough not to get clipped by Cascade of Pain early, but avoiding it during coil beams is tough indeed. Uh, in softcore, you can just take an approach of when the Maven does Cascade of Pain during the final phase, uh, just running into something else and getting killed, or you can log out. Uh, that's an option, and you can certainly do that if you want. 
uh, but you're going to need to have a lot of damage to burst down that last phase quickly. As for all, all is the hardest of these bosses to find and the hardest to kill, much less to kill in style. Although you do have unlimited tries at doing the special challenge here. Uh, if you fail a condition, so if you do get hit by crystalline fissures, but you do survive, you can just log out. You've only lost sulfite. You haven't lost anything else. Just come back and try again. So I think that most players pathway to this will be to skip the Maven and skip all. But if you're having trouble with Uber Elder, then you can definitely do one of the other two instead. I think everyone's going to do Uber Ad 3 and everyone's going to do Cyrus 8 though. Those are by far the easiest of these options. Uh, next up is Master the Blood Crucible. Allocate all 63 passives in the Blood Crucible system. This looks really easy and it isn't. Uh, it's almost an exponential curve where each level is a little bit, uh, is kind of close to 13% longer than the one before. This means that hitting level 50 is 20% of the way to reaching level 63. Uh, expect this to take a thousand maps of getting to 160 Scourge counter. Uh, this is easiest in low tier maps, and I hate saying those words, but it does sum up the Scourge League. Easiest in low tier maps. Endgame Grinds comes next. Uh, you got to choose four. Level 100, 1000 Delve, 50 Enriched Labs, 1000 Rituals, 50 Synthesized Maps, or 50 Abyssal Depths. And when they say unique boss of Abyssal Depths, uh, the Spire encounters count. So it is not just the Liches, the Spires count as well, the, uh, the Phylactery encounters. So this means that two of these are easy. Abyssal Depths and Rituals. Uh, everyone that is going to go for 40 or 40 challenges will do these. Bloodfilled Vessels will help you force maps to have more ritual encounters on them. Uh, in theory, sextants do as well, but in practice, the sextant mods that affect rituals are too rare to matter very much. Uh, something like 1 in 200 awakened sextants or 1 in 200 elevated sextants that will roll the mod that adds additional that adds additional rituals into an area. So don't focus on getting that. If you do get it, fantastic, that's a bonus, but most of your rituals will come from just random chance mapping in Haywark Hamlet or from forcing them onto maps by using a blood-filled vessel. Uh, the hardest encounter here is going to be Delve. You want to skip this on all characters unless you are personally obsessed with Delve. If you are, hit 100 and get a Headhunter or Mage Blood first. Then, and only then, start your push to 1000 Delve. Uh, if this sounds unreasonable, then you definitely should skip hitting 1000 Delve. Uh, 1000 Delve is an extreme power gamer only grind at the moment, uh, and it is far harder than anything else here. I think for most players, the path of least resistance in Trade League will be doing the Enriched Labyrinths and the Synthesized Maps. Synthesized Maps will cost you quite a bit of currency, uh, even though you will do the Forgotten in between each round, uh, you will still lose currency doing these. If you're going to go this approach, then you should spec into all of the Synthesis mods on the Uncharted Realms, and then just you know run as many of them as you can, and run your Forgotten in between them. You will make some of your currency back, but you will end up losing currency doing this. Your best bet will be to run your synthesis maps in a group uh, with other players that are also chasing the endgame grinds rewards. Uh, that should help defray some of the costs as you can split it between more players. Uh, in any case, though, I think that you're going to want to seriously uh, consider acquiring a headhunter before starting endgame grinds, uh, and it will speed you up and it will help you with the Blood Crucible mastery as well. That's all I got on this. Uh, me of Olives have interesting results, and if you want to download the notes, then they will be available on my blog, sergog.com, uh, link down in the description below.